God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a great joy to be with you, my brothers and sisters, to be with you in person, to those of us, to those of you, excuse me, watching over the live stream, great to be with you. Uh, not that I don't love you, but I really love having people in the church. It's really nice to have real people here. And I realize you might be laughing, but I can't hear you because you have masks on. So if, if it feels a little bit awkward, that's okay. If I were to ask you the question, what is wrong with the world today? What would your response be? I don't, I don't need answers shouted out, uh, but what is wrong with the world today? I'm sure, we could come up with a long list begin with all kinds of different things. And there's a famous English Catholic author, G.K. Chesterton, a very, very bright man, very witty. And he was asked to write an essay given this prompt, what is wrong with the world today? And as he submitted his essay, uh, his essay was all of two words, I am, I am. G.K., in, his, in sort of in his brilliance and his simplicity here, recognizes the reality of what's wrong with the world and its sin. It's the fact that we live in a fallen world. And what's really wrong with the world is the places of sin in my own heart, the places of my fallen human nature. As St. Paul says, I do the things that I don't want to do, and I don't do the things that I want to do, that I'm at war within myself, that there's a brokenness and dysfunction within my own heart. He says, I am what's wrong with the world. The good news, my brothers and sisters, is that if we're ready to acknowledge that what's wrong with the world is the places of sinfulness in my own heart, this isn't the final word. The good news that we celebrate in this feast today, the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, is this mystery that our God is one God and three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that God is a communion of love an eternal exchange of love. That the Father is constantly pouring himself out to the Son. And the Son is perfectly receiving this gift and also reciprocating by giving himself back to the Father completely. And the Spirit is this exchange of love between the Father and the Son. That this communion of love, that this is what we are invited into. That it's in this communion of love that we can experience redemption and transformation of the broken places in our hearts, of the sinful places in our hearts, that the place that we experience restoration and transformation, it's in this love of the most holy trinity. It's in this love. And my brothers and sisters, this is the remedy to the brokenness of the world around us. It's allowing Jesus to bring about conversion in our own hearts deeper transformation in our own lives. I would like to invite us as a parish to commit to two very practical ways that we can begin to receive this love in deeper ways. The first being repentance. First being acknowledging my sinfulness. And the, the most fitting way to do this before the Lord is to take advantage of the sacrament of confession. We're very blessed over the course of this month of June to have another priest in residence here, Father Paul Erickson, who's the chaplain at Lansing Catholic High School. And he'll be staying with us and he'll be helping through the times of confession. So again, if you're afraid to go to confession to me for some reason, you'll be able to take advantage of having a random priest here that we'll, you'll hopefully never see ever again. But to take advantage of this gift of the sacrament of confession, that as we repent, as we acknowledge our brokenness before the Lord, it's in confession that we encounter this love of the Most Holy Trinity, that we encounter his mercy and his goodness, that his love might redeem 
these broken places in our hearts. And the other thing that I'd advise us to do, aside from repentance and going to confession, is to turn off your devices. <laughs> turn off your devices. I was just on retreat this past week, and possibly one of the best parts of the retreat was having my phone and computer shut off. There's something wonderful about not being bombarded with everything the media wants to feed us. And I'm not suggesting that we run away or hide under a rock, uh, afraid of what's going on in the world. But my brothers and sisters, the more time that we spend consuming media, the more that they begin to influence how we think and how we see reality. And we do not want that to happen. We want to see reality for what it is through the eyes of the maker of reality, through the eyes of Jesus Christ that we're going to be influenced one way or the other. And the question of what am I consuming during the course of the week is going to have a direct impact on how I see the world around me. And the more that I'm spending time consuming media, the more I'm going to be drawn to a place of fear and anxiety, anger, frustration. Whereas I can be aware of what's going on in the world, but I can be rooted in Jesus Christ. I can be rooted in the love of the Most Holy Trinity. And I would invite you, again, just to take a, a, a careful and gentle look at your life and say, where are the places where I'm spending too much time in front of a screen or consuming media? Where are the places that I, that I can shut this off, spend more time with family, I reach out to friends? I, I realized back in, in the early stages of Lent, prior to everything being shut down, uh, there was a challenge that I offered to the parish at that time of getting together with three other households from the parish. You might call it, let's spread the coronavirus at St. John the Baptist. Um, <laughs> seems a little ridiculous now. But we can still do this. We can actually get together with people. You can get together outside. You can make phone calls. That we can actually connect with other people and love our brothers and sisters in the parish. That we might more deeply be rooted in the love of the Most Holy Trinity that we can then go out to the world around us, to society around us, which is deeply hurting, which is deeply broken and in desperate need of this love, in desperate need of this communion of love of the Most Holy Trinity. And so again, I'd, I'd encourage you to be taking a careful look and, and setting aside these things and investing in things that are actually going to be life-giving and transforming. Spending time with with scripture, spending time in prayer, spending time with loved ones, investing in things that are actually going to be rewarding and life-giving to us. My brothers and sisters, this great feast is an invitation to enter more deeply into this communion of love, that we might experience restoration of our hearts, restoration of the broken places in our lives, that if we acknowledge our brokenness before him, uh, we, might be re we might be redeemed, we might receive, as Jesus says in today's gospel, this gift of eternal life, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that those who believe in him might receive this gift of eternal life.